Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special episode of Inspire Africa. I am Jerry Fisayo Bambi. Coming up, tackling mental health issues in Uganda through the use of visual art. Introducing American football to young people in Ivory Coast. And later, we hear from Tisia Mukuna, the founder of the Congolese coffee brand La Quinoise. This is Inspire Africa. Now, world over, many people face daily challenges and their mental health has been additionally burdened by the COVID-19 pandemic. One 2004 study estimated that 35% of Ugandans suffer from some form of mental disorder. A group now wants to change that. Razia Atma tells us more. A group of artists is moving around Uganda painting walls with soothing visuals to help the mentally ill. The awareness campaign for creatives is in partnership with Policy, an NGO. They are using data artistry to empower the youth in tackling mental issues. The pieces of artwork are applied in different areas around the country. Since mental health deals with psychology, we've picked the brain and we've incorporated it, we've incorporated it in, in our painting to be straight to the point. And the information behind is, 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 is a functioning brain. In the capital, Kampala, they've targeted suburbs in which drug abuse, a leading cause of mental illness, is prevalent and the psychological impact is already being felt. So whenever I pass through this area and I see that picture, it gives me the courage as a youth. Psychiatry health services are inadequate, yet mental and behavioral disorders are affecting more people every day. Hundreds of patients are admitted at the country's National Referral Mental Hospital. This artistic intervention is very much welcomed. Some of them have gone through trauma, and many times those experiences can block you know, their ability to express themselves, especially verbally. And the best way and safest way we do that is by offering them art. To promote mental health, talking about it, speaking up, seeking treatment, dreaming and praying are encouraged. And all these messages are emphasized on this mural painting, which makes it more than just beautifying a street. Razia Athman for Africa News in Kampala, Uganda. Football is the most popular sport in Ivory Coast. The Ivorian elephants have produced many stars who have won national and continental laurels and for club football as well. But there is a new sport in town. It's called American football. The promoter's connection Ivory Coast had with the sport of American football was because Tano Passanio, an American born to Ivorian and Ugandan parents, plays as a defensive end for the New Orleans Saints. Nothing else. But since 2013, this sport has been creeping into the West African country, with especially children getting interested. Samuel Begre is evidence that this sport is having a positive reception in the country. He features as a quarterback for the Golden Eagles, a local outfit. Today, he's come to show some silverware he's won recently to his parents. With all these trophies, when he goes to play and he comes back to tell me I succeeded, I got a trophy, I tell him congratulations. He tells me I want to go to Europe. I said no because it is necessary that American soccer remains in Ivory Coast. And it is with you that everyone will say that we have a leader here. It is a pride for me. When I arrive at the stadium, all these friends come to me to give me a seat. It gives me a lot of pride. He loves what he does. When not competing against senior teams, Begay is coaching children, showing them how the sport is played. I used to live in the neighborhood, and in the evenings, I would come to watch the Golden Eagles practice. I fell in love with someone, and he really motivated me. It was because of him that I got into the soccer, and I would love to play in the NFL. In Ivory Coast, football is the most popular sport. But that has not stopped these youngsters from dreaming of a future as star American footballers. It is really important to have a new generation of players and who are preparing them. A federation which runs the affairs of this sport was formed in 2020, but there is no local league yet. The federation's ambition is to develop this sport but with Ivorian characteristics. 
Our expectation is to really develop the maximum number of clubs, to have emerging clubs. We surely have clubs that will be born this year. This is a particular sport, but we want to do it in the Ivorian culture. With barely 200 members and only four clubs nationwide, American soccer remains a minority sport that is struggling to take off in Ivory Coast. In 2018, Tisia Mukuna, a young repat back in her native country, DRC, founded the Congolese coffee brand La Quinoise. Since then, she has received acclaim for the growth of her business. She joins us now from Kinshasa. Good to have you with us, Tisia. Tell us about the journey so far. What led you into starting off your own cafe? It all started when I was a student. I used to come back to the DRC a lot. I used to carry things with my dad. And we decided to start the coffee shop too, except that everyone said coffee does not grow in Kinshasa. Therefore, it started as a challenge. We grew Tashi Sakri, and finally, when I came back to the country, I said to myself, hey, you'd still like to do something with this original thing, because it's the only one that grows in Kinshasa. At first, people told me to sell the coffee to big companies. In the end, I said no. I would like to create my own brand, and I would really like to highlight the Congolese type and value. And that's how Quinoise was created. In Congo, only 3% of the beans grown are produced locally. Why so low, and what are the obstacles to full production? Well, beyond the story that links to the fact that less beans are produced, there is also insecurity. A lot of the coffee coming from the Congo is coming from the east of the country. And in the east, there are massacres, and there is a lot of insecurity, which does not favor the fact that we can launch the business well here. Then there are problems related to infrastructure and electricity. So there you have it. It's the ecosystem today that doesn't allow you to launch the coffee big business. Now, Tisha, your coffee is entirely produced in the DRC, that is from plantation to the harvest to the processing and then to the warehouse. How do you do this? Now, the plantation, as I say, is in Kinshasa, where it's original, the harvesting and the drying and crushing them directly on the plantation. Then we have a small factory with artisanal ovens. We do the roasting. We also have a mill where we grind the stamps. Finally, we package with a certificate and labels. It's really to develop an industry and a factory with high production capacity and to be able to export everywhere in the world. Where would you place coffee in terms of the economic potential of the DRC? So, if Congo were already not heavy in agriculture and even more so in coffee, its export would be really beneficial economically. A lot of countries don't have Tashi Sakri on the spot. They are in demand. So we need to be able to seize this demand, because today we have very few countries from Latin America and Asia, especially Vietnam. And we have some African countries, such as the Congo, which has been acclaimed for its coffee and is coming back to the fore. Do you have plans to develop other projects? In addition to coffee, we would like to develop everything from cocoa to spreads. We would like to develop everything from lemongrass to mango and basil. But we still remain in perennial crops and large-scale processing. Should Africa trust this young generation that is coming back to the continent to develop business? There are two things I remember. There is the fact of trusting the young generation and trusting the people who come back to their country. I'm talking about the Congo today. With a lot of brain drain, we have brilliant Congolese who go and make a career in other countries. It would be good if these people could come back to contribute their grey matter to the development of the country. There is the fact of income, but also the fact of trusting the younger generation. We have a demographic boom, which means that there are more and more young people People. And therefore, it is the youth that are the future of the country, and even of Africa. So I think that we must pay particular attention to these young people who want to change things, these people who want to come back to make things right. So why not? Thank you very much for sharing with us insights about your work. And uh, my very best wishes to you and your team. Thank you so much. 
And with that, we've come to the end of this special episode of Inspire Africa, dedicated to mark African News' 50th anniversary. You can see it again by going to africannews.com forward slash programs. Also, we would love to hear from you. You can send us a message on our social platforms. The address is right there on your screen. I am Jerry Fusaya Bambi, and I'll see you some other time. Bye. A woman seen directing traffic in Stone Town, Zanzibar. This is not just justice for George Floyd. This is accountability. And after the qualifiers comes the games. 24 teams now set for the next AFCON competition in Cameroon.